do not remember much about my escaping from Vietnam but as a boy I follow my uncles and he took me to mm, a little boat from Vietnam escape from the little river back uh, towards the sea uh, South China Sea and then escape to Malaysia during the journey we have faced a lot of uh, difficulties like the uh, storm unforgivable storm uh, Thai pirates the engines of our boat were broke down they brought us to the land to Malaysia where we stay in UN Hesior refugee camp are waiting uh, to resettle in the third country. Do you remember coming to this place here in Swords when you first landed in Ireland? Yes, um, I do remember the building as, uh, are the same from the outside except for a few signs that couldn't up like the satellite dish and you know the trees, the younger trees getting bigger and you know the, the bigger tree getting older and you know a lot of changes. It's been 25 years. And How old were you when you first came? I was uh, roughly around 12. I do play handball outside from the compound and I remember that my hand was so cold hitting the rubber so hard the balls you know so hard <laughs> it hurt my hand really badly hurt swollen afterwards you know oh, gosh. yeah but it was a great laugh you know yeah. it was fun After leaving the center here, we feel very lonely down in Cork. So quiet, so empty, it's so um, uh, you know remote away from the, the group. Yeah. We feel so isolated in Cork. Yeah. Accepting the Vietnamese boat people in 1979 was quite a change for Ireland. Since the formation of the Free State, Ireland had been reluctant to provide safety for refugees at all. Joining the United Nations in 1956, however, put pressure on us to participate in refugee programmes. Still, we ensured that the refugees we accepted were Catholics and didn't participate in programmes in Africa. Welcoming over 200 people from Southeast Asia then was quite significant. Plus, I think we, uh, the Irish people are very appreciated and uh, they are very helpful to us. I, f I think that they were very friendly at the time when we, we arrived. Everyone was friendly to us, trying to help uh, us in many ways if they can. Um, and, but recently, I think that um, the Irish people are looking uh, differently towards uh, probably uh, Asian people. Yeah. I don't know why uh, that happened, but it's, it's really, I can see that uh, a little bit change. Yeah. Change in what way? The way they look, the way it treats uh, towards, I'm not saying racist, but uh, you know, the, the way that I feel is uh, more remote than before. They used to be very friendly. It wasn't just the bright lights of the capital that attracted many of the Vietnamese back to Dublin. For Tien, the support of a larger community relieved the isolation he felt in Cork. 
Struggling to find job security, however, many of the refugees started their own businesses. Tôi đến đây năm 79. Từ ở Mã Lai được chính phủ Ái Lan đưa đến đây. Chúng tôi cố gắng làm đủ thứ chuyện. Lần đầu tiên họ họ đến À, họ đưa tôi đến ở ở xô và khi khi ở xô ra thì tôi nhận được việc làm ở Churi Hotel ở Churi Hotel sau khi Churi Hotel thì thì tôi à, à, tôi à, à, học nghề à, partner business tức là làm đồng xe à, làm đồng xe rồi làm đồng xe rồi sau đó là, sau đó làm đồng xe thì tôi mới bắt đầu làm công việc nấu nướng này để cho lo cho con cái đi ăn đi học cho nên cho nên hiện bây giờ tôi có cái tiệm này cũng cũng hơi lâu nhưng mà chỉ vừa đủ sống để cho con cái ăn học đến ngày nay đó là nguyện vọng của chúng tôi À, nếu nếu làm ở trong gia đình á thì nó vẫn dễ dàng hơn là mình mướn người ta ở ngoài tại vì à, ở trong gia đình rất là quan trọng tại vì con cái làm chung ở trong gia đình để mà à, lo với nhau thì à, nó vẫn tốt hơn là mướn người ở ngoài cho nên à, con tôi á thì à, à, cuối tuần nó về nó phụ với à, chúng tôi À, vào cuối tuần ngày thứ sáu và thứ bảy ngày chủ nhật nó trở về trường học à, để đi học lại nó chỉ cũng có hai ngày trong gia đình còn nhiêu đó thì chúng tôi à, à, vẫn phải tiếp tục làm để mà lo cho con cái à, ăn học đến nơi đến chốn The people who came from Vietnam were program refugees, like the Hungarians before them and more recently those from Bosnia and Kosovo. Being part of a program means that our government decides in advance how many will be hosted and the details of your stay. Most of us are more familiar with the term asylum seeker, meaning an individual who flees war or persecution and applies for refugee status upon arrival in the host country. Whichever way you come, it does make a difference to the policies in place for you when you arrive. When a family member flees as a refugee, it fractures a generation. In Ireland, the Vietnamese community were the first group allowed to participate in family reunification programs. Tien managed to bring over eight members of his family, including his parents, with whom he now lives in Dublin. Their house has become the focus for after-school activities for Tien's nephews. It's a family picture, so anyway. Yeah. It's lovely at someone's wedding. Yes, my sister's uh, wedding. And this took place in Ireland? Yes, yes, in Souls Road here. This, this is my parents here. Yeah. Four brothers and three sisters. One, two, three here. Right. Yeah. And this is my grandparents. Um, they were brought over by my uncles before my family yeah, arrived. And um, and this is my um, paternal grandmother, who arrived later after my family arrived. My family uh, reunited with me in eighty eight, so nineteen eighty eight. It's almost ten years when we first uh, meet each other after I was separated from my family. Do you remember what it was like when you first saw your parents again? When I went to the airport to greet them at the airport. I just um, hold my father and my fam my siblings. Um, tears was in my father's eyes and all that yeah, to see me. But I was hard, you know, uh, hardened. My heart was hardened because of the long time that I haven't seen them. I have no tears to cry anymore. So I wasn't here at the time.
from my experience, I have seen uh, the younger generations. Most of them are born here in Ireland. They get influenced from the Irish people. They hang around with Irish uh, school friends and all that. They got all the. Uh, they are well adapt to the Irish culture. What commemoration have you got? On? Which I don't know. Do you think the younger people here understand the stories and experiences of the older Vietnamese people? I doubt it very much because they grew up here. The parents uh, tried to leave everything behind them and never mention about how they first settled down here in Ireland. They never tell them the backstory about the parents, how they go, going, how they settle down in Ireland, how they escape. So the younger one here wouldn't know exactly what the parents been through. The excitement of getting on stage, the adrenaline rush, the, the audience. Uh, because when you're on stage, all you can see is tiny little faces, but you can't make them out. And it's just deadly being, being there with them watching. If people ask me what nationality I am, I, I automatically write Irish because I'm born here and I've grown up here, I know the Irish tradition totally. Because the Vietnamese culture is, it's very hard for me to follow because everybody I know, everywhere I go, it's the Irish tradition. When I was a kid, I learned, I learned how to speak Vietnamese first. I didn't know a word of English until I was four. I when I went to school, started school, primary school, everything around me was English and that's when my Vietnamese slowed down. And then now my English language is much better than my Vietnamese. I always want to keep the language. Even if I have kids in the future, I'll keep the language in it. And my children will have Vietnamese names. I don't care about the husband. <laughs> Phoenix's parents had not been back to Vietnam since they left in 1979. When her mother returned a few years ago, Phoenix joined her and was introduced to her heritage and this homeland for the first time, but as a stranger. My mom, she was paying for my flight, so I took the chance and I went. We went for a month and when we landed there, my mom bawled her eyes out because it was her first time back in 21 years. Like, and I could feel I could feel the emotions in her. It was amazing. And we went for a month. I met my family over there, her, her side of the family. Never known them. I got really close to my cousin. I, I learned how to ride a motorbike. Everything it was brilliant. It was a holiday to me. I, I'd love to go back, but I never lived there. My auntie was asking me, she kept asking me when I'd go back. And I told her, I said, give me a call when the mosquitoes are gone. Cultural centres provide an important focal point for a community and bridge the gap between generations, especially when their upbringing is radically different. The Irish Vietnamese Cultural Centre here in Hardwick Street in Dublin is one of the few ethnic minority centres in Ireland. Okay. I think it's very important uh, for the, the Vietnamese uh, people to live in this country because uh, we, uh, we have to, to, to help the communities uh, for the older Vietnamese people to live in this country for we meet to, together or they will see each other every week uh, and we can talk in our language. What do your relatives in Vietnam think about your life here in Ireland? My relative thought that uh, I'm have a better life 
have a better, uh, you know, education, have a better, uh, you know, way of living, earn a lot of money and all that. And uh, they never realize what life is here. As many other countries, it's all the same. You have to work hard to earn the living, to earn your bread, that's all. Yeah. Working for family and community are intrinsic to Asian culture. Tian works hard by interpreting for older members of the community and organizing activities in the cultural center. But between leaving Vietnam, time in the refugee camp and learning a new language in Ireland, his own prospects, having once been top of his class, fell dramatically. I thought to myself that if I have a better education, I would have a better life, better job, and a better, uh, you know, the way of living, uh, and enjoy myself, my social life, and all that. But because of uh, lack of education, I feel that uh, I've been low class of being so somebody else that not the right one, you know, that I wish for. Yeah. If going back, I would like, if I could, if time turned back, I could continue my, my education. I would like to go back to Vietnam to live, if I am allowed. And um, because at the moment, um, the Vietnamese government considers as, um, you know, uh, I, I been naturalized and I become an Irish. So if you are a foreigner, they classify you as a, uh, a different class. When you go back to Vietnam, you have to apply for visa and different um, formalities that you will before you enter the country. But of course, I would like to go back there one day uh, to leave. But um, before I go back to Vietnam, I have to know uh, Vietnam has changed. This day marks the 10th anniversary of the massacre in Rwanda. Itai Vureri reports on this and other stories making the news from around the country. Today is the 10th anniversary of the start of the genocide in Rwanda. When the Rwandan president's plane was shot down on the 7th of April 1994, it signaled the start of a killing spree that left almost a million people dead. The killings triggered a massive humanitarian crisis. In just a hundred days, more than 800,000 people had been killed, the vast majority of them Tutsis, many victims of their Hutu neighbors. Those who survived fled to neighboring countries where refugee camps struggled to cope. It was just like it was a huge human catastrophe. I saw bodies, many bodies all around. I never thought this could happen. I knew in the country there was a problem which had never been sorted out. Uh, but I would say I was surprised to see a lot of people could die in a very short time. Dio Ndakirengwa was working as a doctor in Rwanda at the height of the crisis, but no one was immune from the killings, and doctors and nurses also fell victim to the genocide. Uh, soon after the massacres of 1994, among those who were killed were also medical staff. Doctors, nurses, and the other ancillary staff were killed. And you could see we, have so, we had so many people injured. In, in Rwanda, it was a chaotic, Chaotic in the sense there's no staff, no, med no, 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 no medicine, uh, nothing, no coordination. So I can't like describe it was like chaotic. The entire uh, international community stayed behind, watched what was going on in Rwanda while they were capable to stop what was going on. I was so shocked to see how the human being, even in our neighbor our neighboring countries, they just stayed aside, silent, even doing anything. The entire uh, uh, international community should be ashamed that they didn't do what they were supposed to do. More than four million people were displaced by the killings, fleeing to Tanzania, the Congo and Burundi. Here, in massive refugee camps, some help was available from international charities and NGOs, including Trucker. 
Troca has been working in Rwanda for the past 10 years. This year, the Alentin appeal focuses on the generation after the genocide. Uh, the situation on the ground has uh, improved a lot. Uh, people are recovering slowly from the atrocities of 1994. Uh, social services have been rehabilitated. Uh, schools have been you know, reconstructed. Health centers have been uh, reconstructed. And now there is, you know, fair, you know, uh, appropriate, you know, social services. But uh, the government uh, still has got a big challenge. The country has got a big challenge of uh, reconciliation. There are more than 120,000 people in prison awaiting trial for their part in the genocide, and it is estimated that it would take 100 years to try them all. In Ireland, the Rwandan and Burundian communities have joined forces. They both experienced tribally motivated genocide and believe the way forward is to work together as survivors. We are both uh, small communities but who are also victims of conflict and uh, uh, killings and massacres that happen in our countries. In Burundi, we have two ethnies who are antagonist ethnies, the uh, Hutu and the Tutsi. In Rwanda, the same thing. The only difference is that in Burundi, uh, the most of the uh, killings and massacres are uh, attributed to uh, Tutsi, while in Rwanda it's a Hutu. But we think still we are all victims and we should unite because we all lost uh, our loved ones and we are here because of that situation. Tomorrow's International Roma Day. The Roma originated in India, but most now live in Romania. In common with nomadic people, the Roma have persistently suffered from racism all around the world. In Ireland, the Roma community numbers about 3,000. The majority of Roma are Roman Catholic and the Roma language is thousands of years old. In the last hundred years, the Roma started to leave their nomadic lifestyles, but they still hold on to the values of nomadism. The Roma Support Group will be marking International Roma Day again this year at Puffy Point in Dublin. Next week on Manu, a compelling journey of discovery as an Irish woman goes to Africa in search of her estranged father's family who don't even know she exists.